everyone, welcome to another video. So, this video has been a long time in the making. This is one of the things that I have put the most work into in ages. Perhaps even more work than my being Lemony Snicket for a day video. <laughs> Let me tell you everything. As you may remember, I'm in the third and final year of my undergraduate degree in media, journalism and publishing. Bit of a mouthful. <laughs> and because it's a BA honours degree, you have to do either a dissertation or a major project. It may come as a surprise to you that I hate writing essays. And so for that reason, I decided I wanted to do a major project. The challenge was thinking of something that intersected media, journalism and publishing, because I wanted to keep it quite broad. And I happened to come up with a pretty brilliant idea. <laughs> the way a major project works is you have to produce an artefact and then you also have to do a report that's roughly 5,000 words, whereas a dissertation is just a big piece of writing. It's about 8,000 to 10,000 words on my course. You might be thinking, major project sounds ideal, half the word count. <laughs> but let me tell you, it is not half the work count. <laughs> It's a lot of work and a lot of independent work and also a lot of primary work because with a dissertation a lot of what you're doing is curating existing work and knowledge but with a major project you have to make everything from scratch. You have to do research as well but you're literally creating something brand new and writing a report around it. But I think that's enough waffling about that. I can't wait to get onto the project and tell you all about it and I can't wait to show you what I've made. <laughs> Let's get going. So, this project has actually been in my head for ages. <laughs> As part of my art GCSE, you might remember I did a video about my sketchbooks. I had a look at the punk movement. This was way back in 2015, 2016, I think. And I went to this exhibition at the British Library about punk, the punk movement, punks and their culture. And something I noticed was a lot of punks were making zines. Now, what is a zine? A zine is essentially a publication that you make yourself. So it's got real roots in DIY. It's very often about a niche interest or community and might have a small following. So some of the early popular zines in the 1930s came from science fiction. Science fiction was really popular and people were almost making like, I guess like fan fiction or Twitter communities today. People were doing that through their own self-made little booklets and publications and you kind of trade them and collect them. But there have also been really iconic zines in really huge political movements. Like the suffragettes had zines, how cool is that? Common Sense by Thomas Paine if you remember Hamilton. I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine. <laughs> that was kind of a zine. I mean, some argue it's a pamphlet, but it's in that same sort of thing of getting an underground message out by publishing it yourself. They can be really personal, sometimes dubbed per zines or personal zines. They can be political, they can be weird and funny. I read a lot of books to do research for my zine project. I'm gonna show some clips of me flicking through them. But zines have got a really cool underground community and they're really exciting because it means that you don't have to go through traditional gatekeepers. You don't have to ask permission to have your thing published. You could literally go to a copy shop or make them yourself with your hands and start getting the word out there and start trading them. Zines are very often not for profit so you would very often swap them with people and that's all about them being really accessible to communities. Another thing I did for my research is I had a look at a lot of zines. I'm going to link some of my favourites down below. Surprisingly Etsy has a lot of zines available so I got some really amazing zines on there and I was really excited by seeing a variety of printing techniques. I also went to an exhibition a while ago called Print tearing it up with my best friend Anya and it was all about zines and I just love that you can express yourself completely and in a world of perfectionism it encourages imperfect DIY stuff and one of the things I love about zines is you can very often see the person behind it there's this tangible sense that it's handmade because they're not often news oriented it's not like a newspaper where you just throw it away the next day you can keep passing them on and they're just so cool. Have I mentioned I think they're cool? <laughs> so 
let me tell you a little bit about this project and how it moved on. This is my project notebook. This has come with me on this journey and it's where I kind of write all my thoughts about the project as it was going on. So initially I was thinking this project would be a big report on the history of zines and I'd then make a zine at the end based on what I'd learnt. You can see that I made a little cover here that's called The Power of the Zine. That was my original title. The initial feedback I got was that that was too vague and you'll find that a lot, that with academic projects it's all about narrowing it down and making it really specific. So the next thing we talked about was how can we make this topic relevant? And I was really interested in the fact that doing craft really relaxes me. You've probably noticed a lot of the content on this channel is arts and crafts focused. And so I was thinking, could craft be used as a way to relax people, specifically young people? Because I feel like I spend a lot of my time doom scrolling and kind of get sucked in and I don't have that space to just sit with myself and think. I personally believe that arts and crafts can be quite a meditative experience because you're not just sat there worrying, you're doing something with your hands and it kind of unlocks a different space in your head, in your brain. Another aspect that I was really passionate about is growing a community of crafters because I think there are so many people that just don't do any arts or crafts because there's this idea of a sort of hierarchy that you have to be good and I firmly and passionately disagree with that. I think if you're enjoying making something it doesn't matter what it looks like. <laughs> It's all about your relationship with that piece of art or craft that you're doing. And so, after many months of thinking and rehashing and developing the idea, the final title I came up with is Stop Paper Scissors. Do you like what I did there? An investigation into the process of creating a zine with the purpose of developing a community collective united by the desire to craft and create in an increasingly digital age. Again, quite a mouthful. <laughs> but you can tell that it's got really specific here. So the first big chunk of the project was research. I went to zine workshops, both online and in person. I'd already been to some exhibitions. I read a lot of books. And once I got to the point where my head was really full, I thought, okay, I'm ready. I'm gonna lead my very own zine workshop. <laughs> The plan was to lead a workshop with a group of students to give them the space to just not be on screens for a bit and just take time to craft. And I'd just sit them down, I'd provide them with all the materials, pop some music on and see what happened. In order to test my theory, I'd get them to do a questionnaire before and after about how they were feeling, about their relationship with craft and with their screens. And then I could kind of assess the success of the workshop. The final result of the project, you might remember there needs to be an artefact, is that I would then get the work that they'd made and put it into a zine that I could then distribute. <sighs> so just a small amount of work. <laughs> mm. Let's talk about the workshop itself. I was so nervous about this. <laughs> it was really important to me that I created a space that felt really safe for people. Because art can be a very personal thing. Even just sitting and crafting something, making a collage. As I said, it's quite a meditative experience. And so I really wanted people to feel safe. I read this really brilliant book called Craftivism, which was all about creating safe spaces for communities and crafting together to get a message across. And it recommended putting music on. It also recommended having plants in the space because there's been a lot of scientific research that shows that plants help to relax people and so I had this huge spider plant and I repotted all the babies and then I drew faces on the pots and I named each one after a zinester. Zinester is kind of the term for a zine maker that I really liked because I knew that a lot of people coming to the workshop would never have heard of zines before and I really wanted to kind of get those community values in and welcome them to the zine community. I also made a zine workshop banner. This was something that I'd seen a community collective 
creative in Oxford do at one of their workshops and I just loved it and so I made my own. It took absolutely ages but I think it kind of tied the whole space together. I also decided to make myself a zine kit so it had all these materials in that I've been collecting over time, going to charity shops and looking for stuff, supermarkets, I did a little trip to Hobbycraft, just paraphernalia that I collected over the years. I also made myself a toolbox and I put everything in that, I got it from a charity shop and I decorated it myself. It was all about making this project as enjoyable as possible and also having things for people to look at while they were working. Like I liked the idea that they could kind of go through the materials and the tools and pick out what they wanted and what inspired them. The workshop itself, I was so terrified. I booked a room at my uni, Oxford Brooks, and initially the space felt quite dark and clinical, and so I tried to make it as cosy as possible. I also did a little PowerPoint presentation all about zines and giving people their brief, and the kind of overriding theme and brief of the zine itself was the relationship that people have with screens, with hobbies, taking time to craft, taking time for yourself. It was just a loose theme, but I find it can be quite helpful to have a theme to work under, an umbrella, especially when you're collating work together. You want to have things that look quite similar. I think it was 13 people came to the workshop. I made these posters because I wanted to, again, have that kind of underground, secretive zine culture feel and I put the posters around my uni and they had a QR code on, very fancy, that people could scan to sign up. The workshop went really well, I was really nervous to begin with but once we all started crafting, I was crafting as well and I was also walking around and helping people and I put some Disney music on and we just had a really fun time. And then everyone took their pot plants home, I collected the questionnaires and the interviews and then it was time to make the zine. <laughs> So the point of stop paper scissors was all about having the space to just stop for a bit and take time to make things with your hands and hopefully discover the benefits of that. So all of the work in this scene would be a culmination of the workshop. There were a few people that couldn't come to the workshop so I said they could submit things if they really wanted to separately. I also had a few submissions from people through Instagram so it's a real culmination of lots of different work. I'd never made a zine before so I didn't really know how to do it. I'd done research but I was having to kind of teach myself by looking at other zines and initially I just put the work together based on what I thought would look nice together. You can actually see here I made a plan. I scanned everything into the computer, the computer then crashed and I lost everything and I cried. <laughs> and I had to scan it all over again which took ages but I scanned it all in and then I put the pages next to each other to see what I think would look nice. This is something I learnt in Art GCSE that it's always best to just try stuff first before you commit to it and so that was my initial plan. I thought it was ready to print, I showed it to my supervisor and my supervisor <laughs> said no. <laughs> what I wasn't doing was I was just putting the work together but I wasn't editing it and she said to be an editor of a magazine you really need to put your stamp on it. So she encouraged me to resize images, to add fonts and text. I also thought I could do some features like little short bits of writing to go next to things and it was all about giving the zine a real flow and a narrative. After much deliberation because I am a perfectionist <laughs> and I wanted it to be really good. I finally got the zine to a point where I felt it was ready to print. A couple of notes. One thing I did that I think was really cool, that was one of my favourite things, was I used this website called Calligrapher to make my own font. You might have noticed as part of my sort of branding I use my handwriting a lot so I turned it into a font and that meant that I could type pages which just sped the whole process up but it meant that it still had this very handmade feel to it. The big difficult decision was deciding how I was going to print it. So initially I wanted to do a risograph print which would have been like say a sheet of pink 
a sheet of blue ink, sometimes just one colour ink. When you see the cover, you'll see that it's kind of all in shades of green, and that's because I was initially going down that Rizza print route, which is quite restrictive in terms of the colours you can use. But I realised, having looked at the work that people did in the workshop, that it was so richly detailed and colourful and eclectic that I really wanted to showcase that work in the best way that I could. I looked at a few different printing options and it is expensive to print a zine and I got very stressed and I was thinking am I even going to be able to print it? It's going to cost me so much. I wasn't able to get any money from the uni to help with my project and I'd already spent a lot of money on crafting supplies and materials. Going to uni is expensive and that is worth remembering. So if I wanted to print the zine I had to find a way to do it cheaply and that came with the Lord and Saviour Mixum who were brilliant. They let me print my zines for £2 a copy, so I got 20 copies printed, so it's just over £40. In an ideal world, I'd like to be able to give all of my subscribers a copy of the zine, but as a solution to that, I'm going to put a link to an online version if you want to have a look and flick through. It won't be quite the same experience, but I'm hoping that you can get a feel for it anyway. But here is a video of me unboxing the zine. I was so excited. <laughs> Now I'm going to notice all the mistakes. <laughs> We then move into the after period. Here is the finished zine. I am so excited. Some of the other paper companies I was looking at when I requested samples, the paper was almost more like a newspaper texture, but this has this lovely kind of glossy silk quality. And I believe it's still quite an eco-friendly printing process, but I'm so proud of it. I can't tell you how long I've been looking at these pieces on a screen and seeing them all collated together, seeing everyone's artwork and their collage is really, really cool. I can't even tell you. There's also something super satisfying about scanning in 3D stuff because like my collage bits, you can see the shadow around them and I love that. It gives it this kind of tactile quality and you just want to touch it. <laughs> but I'm just so proud of it. The next step is gonna be sending the zine out to people. And what I really hope is that they will find a copy of the zine in like a drawer or in their loft in years to come. I hope they don't bin it because I put so much work into it, but it might happen. <laughs> But I want it to kind of be like a time capsule of that time and of that workshop and space. And one of my favourite pages is I did a feedback page and I had the idea of actually taking their handwriting off the questionnaires of what they thought of the workshop and putting it on this page. And I think that's really lovely because you get a real tangible sense of the human beings that were behind this. I won't be marked based on their submissions, it's more about showing that I could take on this massive project, make a zine myself, run a workshop, build a community. This is issue one and my kind of idea for this scene going forwards, because I do think it is a concept that has legs, is that if I wanted to I would have this as almost like a travelling zine. So I go to different communities and each community would do a workshop and then that would make one issue. Who knows if that will happen but I really enjoyed leading the workshop and I'm chuffed to bits with how the zine looks. 
So that's it, my camera's about to die, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're doing any exciting projects. Also, let me know if there are any zines that you like that I can read, or if you've even made one yourself, or if you'd be interested in making one. I'm so passionate about getting people into arts and crafts, and the power of collaborative crafting and taking time for yourself to make something with your hands, because as much as I love screens, we're not just robots. <laughs> And we have skills, and I think skills really need to be valued. I've just loved this project. It's been a journey. There have been definite ups and downs. There's been a lot of tears, a lot of stress, a lot of sweat, especially when carrying all of my art supplies. <laughs> but I'm really, really chuffed to bits with what I produced, with what the group produced. And I'm so proud of myself. This was something I was terrified about, but I kept going. I thought about giving up at times. I thought about switching to a dissertation, but I didn't give up and it's done. And I'm so happy. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a like and you can also hit subscribe, but only if you fancy. I hope you have a lovely week. I hope this has left you feeling a little bit inspired and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye. I made a zine. <laughs> I made a zine. I made a zine, I did it. <laughs>